higher and higher. Chapter 6, Differentiation, Mixed Exercise at the end, 6S. Still question 5, but part C and D this time, otherwise it'd be too long. Right, again it says, find the stationary points, whereas this is a function. As expressed as, it's really say, find the stationary values and the corresponding values of x, and then the nature of that stationary value. But we'll just treat it that way. But it's not ready to go, because I've got a product here. So x squared times them both. x to the 4 minus 2x cubed. Right, now you can differentiate it. So it'll just be 4 times the x cubed. And that'll be 3 2s so are 6, minus 6x squared. Then the statement. Stationary. I should really say stationary value, but just accepting the looking for points. Stationary points means that this derivative should equal zero at them, in which case I'm required to solve this expression equal to zero, and this factorises nicely. In fact, 2 comes out as well as x squared. So 2x squared can come out, leaving you a 4, boom, leaving you a 2x minus a 3. And then, since I've got a product of factors, either one of them could be zero. So if this is zero, that means the x must be zero. Or if this is zero, then the x would have to be three divided by two, three upon two. Put it back in to find the y coordinates, because it was talking about points. It's really, again, I've said find the value was f of zero. Well, you've put zero, zero times anything zero, so then you've got one point. Zero, zero. <coughs> if x is three upon two, that means that y equals, but again there was no mention of y there, but they're talking about points, would be 3 upon 2 squared times the 3 upon 2 squared minus 2 times the 3 upon 2, just substituting it in. So that's 9 upon 4 times, and then you've got for this part 9 upon 4 minus 3. There's a wee bit of calculation here. You could have put in your calculator, but it might have been in paper 1. So 9, 3 is going to be 12, so that's minus 3 upon 4. So that's negative 27 upon 16. So this point is going to be the point where can I put it? 3 upon 2, negative 27 upon 16. Now, what's the nature of it? Right, I'll put my nature table up here. So I've got a nature table. Now I know it's a smooth function. Well, I'll just put a wee cover note on this. It's a smooth function. So nothing nasty will happen between these turning points. So whatever happens at zero, when it leaves zero, it'll continue to do that until it hits another turning point. Whatever was happening before, happened forever. Whatever happens after, happens forever. That's x. I want to find out what this expression comes to. Now you could just pick numbers, something like negative 1, something between 1, something after even 10, and just put it into that expression. Or since it factorises, I think I'll do it that factorised way. That saves me doing any calculations. Because what I'm going to do is just define what the two parts come to separately for any numbers before and after and so on, and then just get their signs and multiply their signs together. Because I know that if it was a positive times a positive, it's positive and so on. And that's handy because I had to have to do anything. x squared at 0 is 0. And if it's not 0, it's got to be positive because it's a square. So it's always going to be positive for that particular factor. This factor is 0 at 3 upon 2. That gives you 3. Make it slightly less than 3 upon 2. It'll be less than 3, so it'll all go negative. Push it over 3 upon 2, it'll get greater than 3. So taking a 3 means... Away means it'll also be positive. That gives me the pairs of factors without even considering numbers, which means f dashed x is going to be product negative, product zero, product negative, product zero, product positive. So it's going down, along, down again, along and up. So I've got a minimum turning point here, and that's a point of inflection, say P O I. And in particular, it's a falling one, a falling point of inflection. So the stationary points would be a falling point of inflection at 0, 0, and a minimum turning point at 3 upon 2, negative 27 upon 16. So I'll put that down there. A falling point of inflection, and that is a min, imum, I'll write it all out, turning point.
you may have preferred to have had that as separate sentences. There is 5C. Then D here. Well, this time it properly is. In graphical form, coordinate equation y equals product still multiply out x to the power 4 minus x cubed. That's pretty much like the last one. Which means that the derivative divided by dx will be 4 times it, 1 off of it, 3 times it, 1 off of it. And then stationary points as before. You'll get a stationary point if the derivative ever equals zero. If this expression here, ooh, a bit messy, ever equals zero. Right, this factorises. I can take out x squared and be left with 4x minus 3. Since it's factorised, if that was responsible for the zero, that means x is zero. If that's responsible for the zero, then x is going to be 3 over 4, 3 quarters. At the same time, work out what y would be using the formula. That one's easy. Nothing times anything's nothing. For this one, though, it's a bit more of a calculation. I've got 3 quarters cubed. Well, I'll just put it down first of all. I've got 3 quarters cubed times 3 quarters minus 1. Well, 3 quarters cubed, that would be 27 over 64. And taking away 1 means times negative a quarter. So it's going to be negative 27 over, and that's going to be 256. So this point, so the two points would be, I've got something happens at 0, 0, and something happens at 3 quarters, negative 27 over 2, 5, 6. For the stationary points. Now, the nature table. Right, well, I've got a polynomial equation. It's going to be a smooth function. Whatever it was doing, it'll do forever, unless it encounters a stationary point. And then it'll do something differently, like go down hover and go back up. But once it's past it, whatever it was doing, it'll do forever, unless it meets another one. I've got this smooth function here. It's probably not necessary to have to write that down. So, where are the points again? Zero and three quarters. Something happened at zero, something happened at three quarters. What happened before zero, what happened in between, and what happened afterwards? Define dy by dx. Now you can either just pick three numbers, put them to this expression and put down the signs for the answers. That would do. That negative one, a half, one. Put them into this. That would do. But since I've got this factorisation, I think I'll use that table of signs method. What would x squared be at each of these places? And what would this thing be at each of these places? Because the sign of the answer will just be the product of these two signs. And they can just get rattled off with almost no calculation x squared would be 0 there, otherwise x squared is always positive. At 3 quarters, this would come to 3 minus 3, which is 0. If I pick a number less than 3 quarters, teeter it the other way, it'll come to less than 3, and then taking away the 3 will force it negative. If I pick a number just over 3 quarters, it'll push it over 3, taking away 3 will make it positive. The product then of each of these parts would be, that's a negative, 0, negative, 0, positive. It's going down, goes along, goes on down, goes along, goes up. It's a minimum turning point and it's a falling point of inflection, which you could just insert beside them. So that first one, that was a falling point of inflection. And that one was a minimum turning point. And there it is, 5D and the whole of question 5.